All right, so the idea in the Internet of Things, or the Internet of Everything, actually, since humans will be involved as well as objects, one part of the vision is that your smartphone or other device uh, will act as kind of the remote control and the central hub of your life. So everything that you're interested in tracking, every physical variable whose state you want to keep track of will be accessible at the touch of a button. That's kind of how revolutions start. They start simple and then gradually these things sort of insinuate themselves into our lives and all of a sudden they just become a part of everyday living. So we can go ahead and check the status of a light and if it's the wrong status we can go ahead and turn things on and off. Of course it's not impressive that I'm turning this on and off a meter away but I could do this just as easily from the other side of the world. So that's the nice thing. We get to leverage the networks that we've built up. It appears not completely insane to postulate that we'll be connecting a trillion devices to the internet within the next couple of decades. And what will these trillion devices be? Well, there'll be things like lighting and appliances in the house. That'll certainly be one aspect of it. There will also be lots and lots of sensors, both out in your garden, say, uh, but also within things like your automobile. Today, 40% of the value of a typical mid-range car is actually in electronics. Easily in a car, you can imagine dozens of these kinds of devices all networked within sort of the bubble of the car, and then a pipe connecting those bubbles, perhaps to other bubbles, and to your home so that you could have telemetry that goes directly to your auto dealership or your favorite mechanic. We've been working with manufacturers who are doing things like petrochemical processing and beer processing and they always want to take a look at the pressures in tanks and the temperatures of things where currently for them to wire all these sensors together is a nightmare of cabling because the sensors might be distributed over the entire area of the plant. This way you just have the sensor here, a source of power, and they all just network wirelessly together. So it's very simple for them to add sensors, which means they add more sensors, which means they're able to monitor processes with greater fidelity, which means better beer, better whatever. We work backwards from that fantasy and figure out what parts are missing right now that could potentially uh, inhibit that future from unfolding. One of the obvious ones is that there aren't enough electrical engineers on Earth to design that many devices. So one of the activities that's uh, taking place here is automated design tools that can act as a workforce multiplier. Are we really going to obligate consumers to change a significant fraction of a trillion batteries every year? I don't think so. Another aspect of the research that we're pursuing is to use base stations that currently are used to aggregate telephone traffic. Uh, we're going to use future 5G and 6G base stations to actually supply power to the devices. It puts a tremendous burden on these base stations. They now have to actually act as power sources. There are lots of problems, lots of technical difficulties with that, regulatory ones as well. And so we're going to attack as much of that as makes sense for a university activity.